Well, this is a U.S. Air Force fighter bomber that can carry either conventional or nuclear weapons. I just read this from the description they have on the board over there on the right. And so uh, this is one of the planes that actually is very big. And there are more right next to this. So let's go look at them. Technology matters. Uh, they have those perhaps uh, at the bottom, um, the weapons, and more here on the right. Not sure exactly what they are, how they are used, etc. Uh, is that a missile or a rocket, whatever it is? It is a missile, apparently. And, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, it's a... Uh, guidelined missile it's a rocket and a missile i was right about that and uh, it says it's used more widely than any other air defense missile in the world etc so it is a soviet missile apparently it was called the Vina. and in the west it was known by its nato code name sa2 SA refers to surface to air, surface to air missile. There are the helicopters there. Hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I see a lot of school kids here. It's summertime and people come here for well, little uh, tours and trips of these very historic uh, and important museums that offers a lot of information, it's educational actually. Yes. And uh, this is the Bell UH-1H Iroquois, whatever that is. It's called, uh, first known as Huey. And it was an army replacement for the S-13 medivac helicopter of Korean War fame, right? So that's that, these two helicopters. Their blades are huge. I don't know how long they are, probably look like they're about 20 feet long. There is the Cobra, it's called Cobra. Can you read it, young man? No. Okay, he says no. Bell AH-1F Cobra, first purpose-built helicopter gunship to enter military service and was the mainstay of U.S. Army attack aviation from its combat, combat in South Vietnam in 1967 and was replaced by a different version, Apache, in the 80s and 90s. Wow. Yep. So this was replaced in the 80s by Apache. Not sure if this is Apache, but that's a Marine. That's big. It really is huge. Look at that. Really, really big. Uh, and Scott, how many blades does it have? One, two, three, etc. And uh, it probably carries a lot of uh, soldiers in it, fighters, whatever you call them, the Marines. Yeah, we'll go in for fighting, etc. So we saw the main helicopters, and then we go on to uh, it's called the Sea Knight, and is actually known as the Frog for its amphibian-like appearance. CH forty-six and it was the primary assault helicopter in over four decades of active service. Yep. Very impressive. I am not sure of the price of these um, equipment, but they must be very, very expensive. There's more information here if people want to read, but probably some of this information is also available online. If you go to the Smithsonian, look at the engine, plane engine there. 
uh, Smithsonian um, Space and Aircraft Museum. If you, if you go there, you'll probably find all the information there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is, these are huge, right? Very big. Plane engines. Oh my God, look at this. This is, I don't know what this is. Oh boy, so big, so big. So, so big. Doesn't seem to end anywhere. Wow, I have no idea what this is. Absolutely no idea. Yep. There must be a description there. I'm gonna check that out. But in the meantime, let me show you some of the other engines uh, that goes inside the plane. Yeah, only an engineer could probably understand how these things work because for people who don't have the engineering background, aviation background and interests will have no idea what these things are. These are all engines, plane engines, my God. And plane engines of different types of uh, planes, right? Different types of planes. Boy, no idea. I don't understand what these are. It's only for an engineer to understand. Aviation engineers would probably love all this. The way these things are spread out and explained and some of the uh, explanation signs given here and the displays of this beautiful equipment and, and, and engineering feat I should say is something that should excite the aviation engineers I imagine right boy oh boy how much information and how much actually uh, genius it would have taken to make all this to produce all this called aeronautical engineering for sure. Yes, sir. Aeronautical engineering at its best. America makes the best planes. Any kinds of planes are made here. And they are the best because the entire world buys from America. And America only. Look at this, huge. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had known physics a little bit more uh, so that I could understand what these things are. And this is Pratt and Whitney. Pratt and Whitney, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. But once you get to know your uh, physics properly, you could probably understand how these things work right unbelievable anyway this has become a very long video i'm going to stop here and continue in part three of the air and space museum in northern virginia thank you bye bye